Ladies and gentlemen, our next speaker is Mr. Martin Burns, who is the Director of Sales at North Europe and MEA for UK Country Manager, also for Freescale. Please could give him a very warm welcome. Thank you. Thank you for your enthusiasm. Okay, good afternoon. Yeah, my name is Martin Burns. I'm responsible for the sales organisation at Freescale and also the UK Country Manager, uh, so responsible for the UK entity. Just less than a minute in Freescale, because I know some of you might not be too familiar with the company. We are a $4 billion semiconductor company, headquartered in Austin, Texas. Um, our main markets, we sell chips into automotive, networking, industrial, and a little bit of consumer. Um, we have got, in the UK, um, our major location is in East Kilbride, which is a town just outside Glasgow, where we've got two significant areas of activity. One, we've got a global centre of excellence for automotive electronics. And secondly, we've got an M2M lab there, which is run by the networking group. And that M2M lab is there to demonstrate M2M use cases, but also develop technologies. And we work in that with our partners. So if anyone's interested in talking about that after the, the presentation, more than welcome. In fact, I'm joined by Ian Davidson from the company. Ian's over there who, uh, who works in that area. So you can understand why this is an important topic for us. And uh, that didn't work very well. Uh, you can understand why this is an important and interesting topic for us. Um, we believe that the application of electronics and semiconductors to different areas within MTM is one of the big growth areas for us. And one of the things I'm going to talk about today, specifically, is safety within the vehicle. <coughs> so you've probably already read that. It's uh, quite a shocking um, statement. And when you look at the specific stats associated with road fatalities and road injuries, it's, uh, it's even more dramatic. So 1.2 million people are killed annually on the roads. And if you look at the road deaths there, so the deaths per 100,000 cars, the range is incredible. And you can see the statistic there for India, which is uh, absolutely shocking. And the number of serious injuries that happen as a result of, of uh, road accidents is probably about 10 times that. And many people live with their injuries for life. The economic impact of this represents about between 1 and 2% of a country's GDP. Specifically in the case of the US, that's around $250 billion of cost, if I can call it that, um, associated with road accidents. However, the transport industry has been doing things about it. In some countries, um, the rate of uh, road deaths has been decreasing, and in some cases quite dramatically. There's many tactics used to affect that, but one of the main things has been the application of electronics to the vehicle. The modern car is probably the most technologically advanced item that any of us own or use on a daily basis. The modern 5 Series BMW has got at least 80 microcontrollers within the car, controlling things from the rain sensor that actuates the window wipers, the engine management unit, or the car's network, a complex network that links the different systems together and gives information to the driver. There are up to 300 million lines of code within the vehicle, which is quite incredible. And you can understand some of the challenges they have in servicing. You probably don't know it, but if you've got a modern car and you put it in for service, you'll be getting software updates in that vehicle. So, um, what does this mean in terms of Connectivity. The one thing I want to start on is safety. There are two current safety systems uh, that are prevalent. Uh, the first one is passive safety, and that is a that those are systems that you really don't want to encounter. So that's your kind of uh, guardian angel approach, uh, the airbag going off, for example. The other one is active safety. Active safety is like a co-pilot type function. So in the example there on the chart, it's a blind spot detection. Further out in time, we can see the autonomous vehicle coming into play, and um, you know, that requires obviously an incredible amount of connectivity and an incredible amount of safety systems associated with it. But of course, you know, Google, to name but one, have been doing some trials in that, which are quite successful. But what we want to talk about is predictive safety, the connected vehicle. So what do we mean by the connected car or the connected vehicle? 
Connected vehicle is a vehicle which on the road can say, here I am. And that statement can be heard by other vehicles and pedestrians and traffic management systems. If you take that information and have more than one vehicle doing that, then you start to build up an interesting picture within a, within a vicinity which will generate data which could be quite interesting and useful. How do you implement those networks then? Well, we've heard a lot about cellular, and cellular certainly has a role to play in connectivity, no doubt about it. However, when it comes to safety, it probably doesn't do the job that's required. And that's where dedicated short-range communication comes in, DSRC. DSRC is a 5.9 gigahertz um, a frequency range where bandwidth has been, frequency point where bandwidth has been assigned. Uh, specifically for vehicle to infrastructure and vehicle to vehicle applications. It's got a range of up to a kilometre, or most of the typical ranges will probably be around uh, three or four hundred metres. And um, one of the things that sets DSRC apart from cellular, for example, is the short latency that it has. So for certain safety critical applications, you require a less than two millisec 20 milliseconds latency, and it's DRC, the DSRC that can implement that. Also, you've got the retransmission capabilities. So you can imagine a motorway, an accident happening five or 600 metres up the road. Um, the connected vehicle, either in the accident, if you're unfortunate, or someone who's passing will register that. And a wave will come down the motorway saying that an accident's ha happened up ahead. And you can uh, modify your driving appropriately in very short time, quicker than the overhead gantries, for example, can show. So that's what the connected vehicle um, can look like. Uh, let me talk about some specific use cases. Hazard warning. Um, I'm not going to talk to the example that's shown up there, which is a breakdown. But imagine um, in a country road in the morning where there's black ice. Your vehicle comes along, hits that black ice. Hopefully you manage to control the vehicle in conjunction with your vehicle systems. Those vehicle systems can detect that, the dynamic stability control, for example and broadcast a message saying there's black ice there. People then approaching that point, because the position is also transmitted, can, can take care with their driving. Organisations associated with gritting the roads can go out and fix the problem. Blue Wave, Blue Wave is about emergency vehicles and sending a signal out saying emergency vehicles approaching, the drivers move over to the side and it's linked into the traffic management systems. The lights go red, so the emergency vehicle can move to where the incident is and can get there potentially saving lives it gets there a lot quicker. Optimal speed. This can be implemented through um, units infrastructure that's put in at junctions, DSRC infrastructure put in at junctions. A car's approaching at 40 miles an hour. The, the infrastructure knows that the light is changing to red in 40 seconds. No problem. Signal the car says continue to go. The opposite is true as well. A car approaching at 40 miles an hour. The, the system says we've got five seconds to the lights changing, the person can start slowing down. And another one is seeing round the corner. So this, in this example here, you can see that you've got a vehicle approaching the T-junction looking to take a left-hand turn. Um, you've got a motorbike overtaking a parked lorry. Um, if there's no connectivity, then you've got a significant chance of an accident there with connectivity, and this is where the 20 millisecond latency comes in, the driver will be alerted that there's a danger there and he can not enter that junction. So what do these networks look like then? How would you implement it? How would we get it going? Well, DSRC modems would be implemented within the vehicle, so built in by the car OEM. And there would also be infrastructure, perhaps initially at some of the key junctions. But, 30 million cars in the UK, we buy 2 million of them annually. It's going to take quite a while before we get to some degree of critical mass, particularly because without legislation, and these types of systems will only be implemented really at the very high end vehicles, which is a relatively small proportion of the number of cars sold. So that's an opportunity for an aftermarket to be formed, okay, with equipment that can be retrofitted into the vehicle, for example. DSRCs like Wi Fi. So you can have DSRC modem capability integrated into your mobile phone, which is another opportunity to boost the usage on this. And that brings the pedestrian into the play, which is quite an interesting concept. 
And now you've also got the ability to, to implement sensor systems at key junctions. These are systems which would identify cars which are not connected and send warning out, warnings out to cars that are connected if the driving style approaching that junction, for example, is one that implements it may be jumping the lights. So, so much for the use case stuff around this. Let's look a little bit at the business model. This is not a complete picture, um, but I'm showing this just to indicate some of the, the flows of control that you have within the connected car environment. Also some of the potential partnerships that will need to be formed and some of the stakeholders. Now, a few observations on this. Um, first of all, I'd suggest that economic value increases the further up that, that um, stack that you go. So from people to the regulatory bodies. So it's that area that you start to affect an impact on the $250 billion worth of, of cost that the US bears on road accidents each year. Um, service providers. There is where potential new applications can be implemented. However, frankly speaking, in my opinion, I think when it comes to the connected vehicle, we really are missing use cases which have been properly tested uh, against potential demand in the marketplace. And that is one of the key things that we need to look at. People don't pay for safety. The, most pop the two most popular options within a vehicle is alloy wheels and leather upholstery. So not advanced safety systems. So you have to ask yourself, will people start buying DSRC modems for their vehicle? Depending on the cost, maybe, but it's not obvious at this stage. Another important player clearly is the car OEM. And the car OEM will have to structure his gateway into the vehicle quite cleverly. He'll probably have two sides to that. One side, which it says in the chart, dirty, I'm sorry if that offends anyone, but one side which is more open, it's perhaps a different term. So that can be used for multimedia downloads, for example. But the other side has to be very tightly controlled and not open to the, the general environment or general service providers. And that is where the DSRC safety messages would be injected uh, and as part of the, the car network. Okay. So, how can we ignite this marketplace? There's a couple of ways to look at that. First of all, let's think about regulation. Now, naturally, and I can say certainly we don't rely on regulation for, for, for um, generating business cases. But let's look at what's happening just now. And we turn to the US as the example. So there's been a number of test cases, a number of trials on connectivity happening. Uh, in various countries, and the US at the moment has got a trial run, running in a, a Michigan town called Anabor. And I'm going to cite some, some uh, information from that trial in a minute. Uh, the, the talk at the moment is that the US may well legislate, because of the safety use case, um, connected vehicles. And that decision will potentially be made within the next 12 to, 12 to 18 months or so. Um, if that happens, then the thoughts are that probably by the year 2018, that it would be legislated that new vehicles will have to um, will have to have DSRC implemented. But I thought it would be interesting just to, to talk a little bit about the trials because when you talk about trials, you have to ask yourself, a small trial or a big trial, what are they looking at, etc. This is on the internet from the Department of Transport in the US. Uh, there's 2,800 cars in this trial, you know, not just cars, vehicles, cars, trucks, and transit buses. Um, the DSRC units are factory fitted units, so they've got car OEMs putting these in on the line as part of the trial as they're built in. <coughs> uh, retrofit, especially in the trucks. Uh, an aftermarket type unit has been trialled as well, and uh, roadside units, so the infrastructure. So it's fairly extensive. And what's perhaps more interesting is the use cases that they're trialling. So the first one is forward collision warning. Um, incidentally, that's not just a safety thing. Forward collisions is uh, one of the most prevalent accidents that's out there. So this is also a cost saving and implications for insurance at, at low speeds. So forward collision warning uh, will, be, will be trialled on it. Lane changing will be included. And intersection movement assist. 
That was the example of seeing round the corners that I spoke about. So that trial finishes in August of this year. So we'll see what happens from a North American standpoint. I think Japan are also looking at potential uh, legislation. Um, in Europe, it's, uh, it's slightly different. There's been some EU directives uh, which are um, you know, giving support for connectivity. And of course, the amount of innovation that comes out uh, the European uh, car industry is substantial. So you can imagine this is a big thing that's been looked at. <coughs> Again, there's trials, etc. But uh, one of the industry consortiums is known as uh, car to car and among other stakeholders, they've got 12 car OEMs involved in that. And that group of car OEMs have stated that from 2015 onwards, they're expecting um, DSRC enabled vehicles to come off the production line. Specifically in Volvo's case, for example, they're saying 2016. So there is um, a movement there, both from a potential legislative standpoint and also an industry commitment uh, to take this forward. So the question is, do we have the technology to really enable this? So let me move back into my day job, which is selling semiconductors. I'm not going to sell you anything. Just to highlight the, um, the, the technology challenges that we have here and to try and give some commentary around um, you know, where we are with it. First of all, from implementing the networks and providing processing power that's required, really not a problem. It's not really that complex at all compared to the other systems that we have out there. Um, and, you know, as long as there's, there's buy-in with the appropriate authorities to put DSRC modems all over the place, it's not really going to be an issue. Sensor systems, um, very advanced sensor systems these days, uh, not, um, not an issue at all in terms of, um, you know, for example, the use case I spoke about, detecting vehicles that are not DS DSRC enabled, is not an issue. We're developing radar-based applications, etc., for the vehicle. There's many things we can do around that. One interesting challenge, though, that has to be addressed by technology is potential driver information overload. So already in today's vehicle, there's a lot of potential calls on the driver's time when really the most important thing for the driver is to make sure he's driving safely. We've been doing some work with Glasgow University um, with their psychology department and the computer science department uh, on this very question and we've been developing solutions on uh, driver distraction to make sure that the right information is getting to the driver when he needs it, that it's prioritised and that there's an avoidance of overload. It's a very important part of the driver experience and something that will have to be looked at by a number of uh, parts of the industry. So, where does this leave us? Safety, as I said, is something that people will not buy normally. Um, we've got the technology to implement the connected car for this use case and the connected car in general. Implementation in the roads, maybe 2015, 2018, and incidentally, it was talk about accelerating adoption. Believe me, I'm with you. And you might think this is a very long time, but as a supplier to the automotive market, that is just round the corner in terms of their time horizons for new technology implementation. But what we do need um, is fresh eyes to look at this problem, or this, the challenge associated with the business model, fresh and maybe young eyes, based on what we said earlier. But fresh eyes to, to look at the opportunity here beyond just the safety use case. And that is why you've got semiconductor companies talking at events like this, you get Freescale talking at this event, because the traditional view of your customer base along a vertical line, you can understand the chain and how it eventually gets sold, won't work here. We have to look horizontally and bring in the different use cases, bring in the companies who have the potential to make an impact here. And only in changing that dynamics of how we develop this market will we really ignite it and get it going. That was it, thank you.